Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to the second presentation that's on hypertension in elderly management strategies. I'd like to welcome Dr. Sanjeev Sharma. He's a senior consultant cardiologist at Patra Hospital and Research Center, New Delhi, for the next 12 minutes. Dr. Sharma, please. Hypertension in elderly has been a controversial subject for the last 30 years. We have seen the time when hypertension was in elderly. We used to say 120 plus age is okay. Then there was a time when 140-90 strict adherence was the rule. But now with GNC 8, again we have gone back. And now the blood pressure for 150 or 90 for elderly, that is 60 plus age group, is okay. So this is a very, very important topic because in elderly, not only that the blood pressure limits have kept on changing over the years, but the systolic hypertension, the isolated systolic hypertension, which is unique for elderly. So these two important issues they arise whenever we treat an elderly, what drug to give, when to give, and what are the comorbid situations. These are all very important issues. So this is a very important topic, and I invite Dr. Sanjeev Sharma from Delhi to address this topic. Dr. Sharma, please. Thank you, sir. And uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Dr. Chopra for this invitation, and chairpersons and friends. As uh, chairperson just said that the hypertension in elderly is a very important issue and needs to be carefully assessed and treated. And uh, we have been hearing since morning that hypertension is not, not well controlled, leading to heart failure and other things. And, uh, but still, we can control that. So there are few changes which happen with the age. That's uh, sodium sensitivity increases with age as does the hypertensive response to various medication. And isolated systolic hypertension becomes more frequent than what we call a systolic diastolic hypertension seen in the younger age group. With age, there is a arterial stiffness and there is a greater incidence of endothelial dysfunction and the frequency of white coat effect increases. And at, at this point, we don't need uh, Dhoni or Virat, but we need somebody like uh, Lakshman or Rahul Dravid who can really manage this blood pressure with the patient very well. A brief understanding of the uh, when we talk of hypertension in the elderly, that though the incidence is quite high, but still it's very poorly controlled. And we can see from the data that's just maybe 30, about 30% 30 of the age group are well controlled, leaving them at increased risk of further future cardiovascular events. However, when we talk of high blood pressure, we forget about the diastolic blood pressure in the younger group, uh, in the elderly group. And one of the studies, the Framingham Heart Study, it revealed a significant increase of cardiovascular this is in patients with a diastolic blood pressure of less than 70 versus 70 to 89 in a cohort of patients who had isolated, isolated systolic hypertension, who had previous cardiovascular events and were not receiving antihypertensive drugs. <clears throat> so when we treat hypertension, we should not forget about the diastolic blood pressure also. <clears throat> in the same way, elderly have increased risk of orthostatic and post frenadial hypertension related to reduction in baroreflex sensitivity. Elderly patients are on alpha blockers due to their prostate problems, and syncope and the fall due to orthostatic hypertension in elderly are common reasons for emergency visits. All this data and pathophysiology of hypertension in the elderly makes the physician a bit confused, and that leads to some bias toward treating this hypertension in the elderly patient, because isolated systolic hypertension is often dubbed as an aging factor and not treated. To consider hypertension is only in the arm and not in the body. No concept of pulse pressure, not seeing the pull. Worry about side effects, need to watch, not to worry. Okay, some control is achieved, so why attain goal blood pressure? Not insisting on compliance with drugs as assessments, pressure from patients, blood pressure, how much the patient forces the physician say, no, it's okay, don't please bring it down further. Then. Concentrating on the pill and not the ill, total life control is forgotten. Because of this, I think this is very common with us. Most of us probably so far have been telling our patients, you are too old to be treated. I think you don't need a management of your blood pressure. Your age is quite, oh, you're quite old, so it's okay for you. So in the next few slides, I want to change this concept that we'll tell our patient, no, you're old to be treated, so that I want you to live happily and further, maybe reaching up to 19, 100 with a good control of blood pressure and without suffering from the stroke or myocardial infarction. So when we talk of blood pressure, what data, like so far the it has been very challenging treating these elderly patients. 
uh, physicians were really very hesitant to treat. So what data we have? And the confidence came from these few trials. That is a UK prospective diabetes study, systolic hypertension in the elderly program, systolic hypertension in Europe trial, Europa trial, systolic hypertension in China trial, hypertension in the very elderly trial and few other trials which showed that the good control of blood pressure in the elderly group lead to significant reduction in the stroke and incidence of myocardial infarction. So that gave us confidence, yes, these patients should be treated. Risk, we all know uh, that higher the blood pressure, higher the systolic blood pressure, elderly are increased for strokes. This second national health and nutritional survey and the systolic hypertension in elderly, it revealed that over 65 years, there was a linear correlation with stroke, particularly increased systolic blood pressure. And paradoxically, if the diastolic blood pressure was less than 65, there was enhancing mortality, what we call a Jacob phenomenon. And elderly patients have a higher baseline cardiac risk profile, and even a modest reduction in blood pressure in these patients lead to a significant benefit. So once we have decided to treat elderly person with a uh, some drug or uh, something we should be very clear for diagnosis. Why? Because they have a high incidence of pseudo-hypertension. What is pseudo-hypertension? Is that they have a very highly calcific arteries and if you keep on uh, increasing your mercury sanguinometer, the blood pressure is continues to be high because it's not compressed. So how do we differentiate between these two? One we know as a oscillus. Uh, this thing, uh, sign and another is a, uh, that is when you compress it, the, pulse, the blood pressure is not felt, but you can still feel the artery, then probably you are dealing with a pseudo-hypertension. But you have to be very good clinician to feel that. And then what we call as a, uh, you see the blood pressure in a supine position, ask the patient to stand. If there is a disproportionate fall in the systolic blood pressure, probably you are dealing with a pseudo-hypertension. Because if you are not diagnosing this properly, you can lead to over-treatment and may lead to more complications. Then we, what we have, we have mass hypertension that at the clinician, uh, at the clinic, the blood pressure is normal, and at home, in their own blood pressure machines, the blood pressure is found to be high. Then we have what we call as a situational hypertension or the white coat hypertension. Patient in the clinic have a very high blood pressure, but when he goes home, his blood pressure is normal. So I think Dr. Chopra has already discussed this: the role of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, and this is the one group where should we focus on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring so that we can really assessment whether the individual is really suffering from a high blood pressure and needs to be treated. And when we have a decided to treat that, probably nothing more is more uh, relevant in this group of patients that's applying geriatric principles. It's very essential in everyday practice. Conservative treatment is increasingly important to age. Today we have been listening from the yoga and all those things and we listened in the morning of the diastolic heart failure. The same principle, in, when we're treating the elderly group, they have a high systolic, lower diastolic blood pressure. So it is the day to day regular aerobic exercise, weight control, yoga, meditation, all those things which really helps in controlling the systolic blood pressure as well as not allowing the diastolic blood pressure to fall and thus maintaining a good range so that they don't have a, a problems related to the uh, wide fluctuation in the blood pressure. Dietary sodium restriction in Elderly, as they elderly, because of their various uh, factors, they paradoxically increase salt intake. Treatment of sleep apnea, and most important, when we treat them, consider the degree of frailty as well as the chronological age, comorbidities, and the other drugs that these patients are taking. So, what should be our goal? I think today we are very confused. We have different uh, societies have come out with different guidelines. However, this is the guideline from the JNC8 where they have mentioned that in elderly hypertensive with systolic blood pressure of more than 160, there is solid evidence to recommend reducing systolic blood pressure to between 150 and 140. In fit elderly patients less than 80 years, treatment may be considered as systolic blood pressure more than 140 with a target of less than 140 if treatment is well tolerated. In elderly patients more than 80 years with initial systolic blood pressure of more than 160, it is recommended to reduce systolic blood pressure to between 150 and 140, provided they are in good physical and mental condition. Frail individual may be decision to a treating physician whether he, he can assess the patient and whether he'll be, he is not prone to orthostatic hypotension and falls and other things. And a continuation of well-tolerated antihypertensive treatment should be considered when treated individual becomes octogenarian. After this, a brief, uh, the last, uh, uh, it has mentioned about the systolic blood pressure intervention trial. 
and uh, it has not really you have to see whether it has really come into practice but definitely the next GNC guideline they will have to depend on this trial when they uh, bring out new guidelines. This was a randomized trial we all know whether they compared between 120 and 140 systolic blood pressure. They have not looked into the data on the diastolic blood pressure. So they, went, they found that the, when there is a good control like about 120, there was a significant reduction in cardiovascular events and mortality from all cause. However, the data from the diastolic blood pressure in this trial probably still to come and uh, maybe this year they will give a data on the diastolic blood pressure. So what drug should we consider in this age group? First of all, we need to a careful review of the medication that the patient is taking. Most of them are on non-steroid antiflammatory drugs on some decongestant which leads to increase of the blood pressure. Careful review of the renal function, electrolytes prior to initiation of therapy. Uh, medical research council trial suggests that the beta blockers as first line therapy may actually worsen cardiovascular out outcomes in patients who are older than 60 years. Furthermore, beta blockers are not first line therapy in GNC guidelines. GNC guidelines give equal importance to ACE inhibitors, ARB, diuretics and calcium channel blockers. However, e ESC and ESC guidelines they recommend calcium antagonists for diuretics. A large trial focused on chlorothalidone and gave data that it was superior to other drugs. A Scott BPLA trial which focused on calcium channel blockers and diuretics. However, in elderly the issue with diuretics is electrolyte imbalance. They are more prone to hyponatremia and uh, triglyceride increases their impaired glucose tolerance. So with the available data, it suggests that it's reasonable to use long-acting diet hydropyridine calcium channel blockers as the first line therapy in elderly patients. So con to conclude, our elderly population is growing rapidly and along with the high prevalence of hypertension, morbidity and mortality is expected to increase. Treatment in elderly has demonstrated to be beneficial in this population. One should be careful of the lower the better approach given the JGOV effect and a possible increase in, is increase in the adverse events at a very low diastolic blood pressure, watch for pharmacy. The rule of the thumb should be start low, go slow, educate the patient, talk to them and explain about the need for taking medicines. And uh, this is a, uh, I have taken a quote from Dr. Ram's editorial from Indian Heart Journal who said, no confusion, only clarity. Keep it below 140.80. So treatment of blood pressure should be simple, no confusion, straightforward and go for it. Thanks. Thanks for your... Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Sharma, for covering this complex topic in totality. We will have question, answer and discussion at the end of the session. So yeah. please join us on the dais. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I request Dr. Sharma to join. We move on to the next leg and that will be on dyslipidemia and obesity care track innovations.